Hey, what is up everyone, Norman from Future Student University here, and welcome to another video in this Vertifit series. In the previous videos, we have looked at how to add query parameters to our requests. We have seen options on how to make them optional, and how we can add multiple query parameters at the same time. Now we will look at an option how to make it even more dynamic. If you have a lot of optional query parameters, but only using a few out of those, this is very convenient. So before we jump into it, if you need the code, you can find it on our website. It's the first link in the description below. Just like last time, we're working with a imaginary search app and we're implementing that against our own backend. So let's look at what we did last time. So last time we declared the search for users endpoint with three parameters. Often search endpoints have more than just three parameters. And if you have like 10 of these here, you can pass nulls for the ones you don't want to include in the request, but it's still a hassle to always pass 10, 12 nulls. So let's look at the more dynamic version of it, which is using the query map um, annotation. So let's copy this and create a second version of it. Instead of declaring all three explicitly, we're just going to pass a map of options and obviously this needs to be a map. The first one is a string, which basically replaces this part. And the second one is going to be the value um, you're passing. And we're just going to use the general object type, just in case we want to maybe pass strings or ints or whatever fits here. And that would already be it. So let's go to in our activity and switch from this version to this version. So here we have seen in the previous version, we just pass the three values directly. So now let's create a map instead. As I said, the type should be string object. You could use string string if that fits for your Vux case. But since we're dealing with ins and strings here, I'm just going to use string object. And let's just use a hash map. To that map, we can add the values just like a regular map. So we're going to say what were our three parameters. There was ID, sort, and page. So ID, we said we are passing four. And here we wanted to pass 12. Let's not use the map for now and just execute it with, the, with our previous implementation and see what arrives at the server. Okay, our API breakpoint triggered. And as you can see down here, the query has three parameters just as expected, ID, page, and sort. Now let's switch back to Android Studio and instead of sending them directly, we're going to use our new way with the map. So now jumping into this declaration right here. And let's try this one. So the activity we started, let's start the search and go to our backend and step through it. So this was our old result with uh, these three. And if we step through it and look at the new one, it's the exact same. So it doesn't matter to the backend, to the API, if you're using query map or the explicit um, declaration of the variables. You as the Android app developer need to choose what is better fit to you and your use case. The advantage of the map is that you can also do some clever things. Depending on the scenario, you could add new values, which would be more complicated if you have an explicit declaration. So for example, we could do So only if you're in the debugging mode, you're sending this additional parameter with it. Obviously this depends on what you need, but just so that you get an idea, the map is very flexible. You can add additional values just based on any logic you can think of. Now one thing I want to show you is, 
if you use a map, you lose a certain validation. So up here, you know you always have to pass the ID, order, and page, even if it can be now, but you always have to pass it. Down here, you're passing a map which could be completely empty. And if you always need one specific value, for example, an API key, this doesn't guarantee that you actually have it in the map. So what I would suggest here is to actually use one of these query annotations for everything you need to know. So let's say we need the ID and everything else comes in the map, which is optional. So obviously this ID here doesn't make sense anymore. So we're going to take this away. And instead we're going to pass an ID, um, which let's say it's 42 now, and then the map. So let's try this one out. Once again, let's step through our backend here. This was a previous version, and if we click to, if we go to the next one, we see that we have the debug flag now, just like expected. We have the ID, which was an explicit annotation, and the other three came from the map. So retrofit combines all value you're passing. It doesn't matter if it's an explicit annotation or if it's the query map one. Fantastic. This was. And this was it for this video. So let's just quickly recap it. You have seen how you can use a query map annotation to dynamically add values. You could even make it depending on some logic, maybe on the build config I showed you just a minute ago. You can also combine it with other query um, declarations. So for example, with a classic query annotation and Retrofit will merge all of these into one request. Thank you for watching. If you've learned something, please give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in this series. Enjoy coding and make it rock.